live at ringside with two time heavyweight champion George Foreman George uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. had a fascinating quote a couple of days ago he said I'm the best boxer in boxing so therefore I'm the best athlete in all of sports because boxers face unique pressures to win every time out not to mention of course the punishment that they take is young Floyd onto something here or is this just youthful exuberance as he comes back home well we just want him to be the best boxer and best athlete tonight that's what we I think everybody at home is looking for that as well. He's putting a lot of pressure on himself to perform as he moves up uh, through the ranks of the pound for pound list and continues to say that he ought to be ranked up there with or ahead of Felix Trinidad Shane Mosley Roy Jones um, Larry Mayweather has had a lot of success in the ring despite many distractions outside the ring. Does that mean that he has dodged the too much too soon bullet that clipped fighters like Diego Corrales David Reed and Fernando Vargas. Given his talent, he probably caught the bullet in his teeth. <laughs> Here's another cautionary tale. The James Dean of boxing, Stanley Ketchell. When he was 21 years old, Stanley Ketchell won the middleweight championship of the world. Two years later, he challenged the heavyweight champion, Jack Johnson, and stunningly knocked him down. Johnson got up, shocked, and then shocked Ketchell knocking him out. Less than a year later, Ketchell was shot dead by the boyfriend of a man he was, of, of a girl that he, Ketchell, was having breakfast with. He remains a legend in the sport. So much so that many people still visit his gravesite right here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. In another way, Jim, Floyd Mayweather has come home to Grand Rapids to enhance himself in the eyes of the public by having a big crowd like this, by showing his stuff, trying to win over fans, which is a big part of what a prize fighter has to do. Now, if he can only avoid the wrong breakfast partner, as Ketchell <laughs> failed to do. Tale of the tape now for Floyd Mayweather Jr. against Carlos Hernandez. And you can see that Mayweather is precocious. At age 24, he has risen to near the top of the sport. Fernandez, age 30, has waited a long time for an opportunity like this. They are separated in height by two inches in Mayweather's favor, six and a half inches in reach in Mayweather's favor. He weighed in right at the 130-pound limit and unofficially will enter the ring tonight at 139, two pounds heavier than his opponent. Bunch stat numbers, Larry. Take a look at their activity against Gennaro Hernandez, the former junior lightweight champion. Both of them have fought. Hernandez, much more activity, but you can't be that active against a fighter like Mayweather. And jab-wise, it's not even a rumor. Of the final round. Jim. All right, Harold, as you watch tonight, you can log on to HBO.com slash boxing. For live trainer audio, you can choose which trainer and cornerman you want to listen to. You can also see CompuBox punch stat numbers as they mount up during the fight. Join an open chat room to talk with fellow boxing fans and answer the question, who do you think will win to become undisputed middleweight champion this fall? Will it be Bernard Hopkins or Felix Trinidad? We'll give you the results of our website poll at the end of tonight's telecast. So while you're watching Floyd Mayweather Jr., tell us who you think will win Hopkins Trinidad. Here comes Carlos Hernandez. He did have a title opportunity earlier against his very close friend, Gennaro Hernandez. And Gennaro won virtually every round in the fight to nearly whitewash Carlos. Hernandez is being trained for this fight by Emilia Russo, who was the trainer of the great middleweight uh, uh, champion, Carlos Manzone. Emmanuel Stewart has uh, trained Hernandez, so was Jackie McCoy, an outstanding trainer in California. What do they see in them? Why do they want to keep training him? Well, for one thing, he's a terrific guy. Uh, about as engaging a young man as we've ever spoken to in fighter meetings. For another, he's won 33 out of 36 fights, 21 by KO, and has a good chin himself, never having been knocked out. 
He acknowledges that he couldn't conceivably outbox Floyd Mayweather Jr. He says, I'm going to have to come in there tonight and make it a fight. And here comes Pretty Boy Floyd. This has been less of a uh, center mail journey home for Floyd Mayweather Jr. than a business trip home. When he fought here last a couple of years ago, the place was filled to the rafters when they charged $50 for a ringside seat. Tonight, $200 for a ringside seat and perhaps 80% capacity. And the forbidding common opponent comparison for Hernandez is that when Mayweather Jr. fought against Gennaro Hernandez, he whitewashed Gennaro in much the same way Gennaro had whitewashed Carlos Hernandez. All part of the record that's 25-0 with 19 knockouts. His last performance against Diego Corrales was simply devastating. Knocked Corrales down six times. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Arum and Top Rank Incorporated is proud to present 12 rounds of boxing for the Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Brought to you in association with your undisputed king of beer, Budweiser, and HBO World Championship Boxing. This contest is sanctioned by the Michigan Athletic Board of Control and the World Boxing Council. The three judges at ringside scoring the bout will be Marty Salmon, Peter Tremetera, and Robert Watson. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, working for the 27th time in a world title bout, Dale Grable. And now, for the thousands in attendance, and the millions watching around the world on HBO. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, white, and blue. He weighed in at 128 and one half pounds. His professional record consists of 36 bouts with 33 victories, including 21 knockouts. And he has only two losses with a draw. Ladies and gentlemen, from Soya Panjo, San Salvador, El Salvador, here is the challenger, Carlos Famoso Hernandez. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, black, and red, and weighing in at 130 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 25 bouts, 25 victories, including 19 knockouts. And he is recognized, pound for pound, among the very best fighters in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the pride of Grand Rapids, Michigan, the reigning and defending undefeated super featherweight champion of the world, Pretty Boy, Floyd Mayweather. Gentlemen, you were given your instructions in the dressing room. Listen to my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch gloves, come on and do it. Floyd Jr. is trained now by his uncle Roger, a former champion. Roger is competitive with his brother, Floyd Sr. And from what we've heard, he wants to see a relatively fast knockout tonight. Let's see if we get it. Pretty boy Floyd is wearing leather trunks. I don't think I've ever seen that before. This is an awkward position for Floyd Mayweather to be in. First, he's the bigger guy, and he's not an underdog. Some fighters, it's hard to fight from that position because you got to go out there and prove something. Whenever he's the underdog and the smaller guy, you can see some good from him. Diego Corrales 
Vegas in January. That fight was regarded by the odds makers as pretty much a pick em fight. But within the first two minutes, you could see the stunning difference in speed and mobility between Mayweather and Corrales, and the outcome of the fight was clear within the early rounds. We see that Floyd is standing more flat-footed, trying to get more power into his punches. You may recall, Jim, that when he fought here two years ago, there was a 12-round fight against a fighter named Rios, who was really just there to survive. Uh, Floyd was not happy about that outcome. So he wants to uh, give his hometown fans a bit of a show. Probably one of the most foolish things a boxer can do is go out and try to please hometown fans in general. You got to go out there and concentrate on winning. Once you step over that boundary as a performer, and that's when bad things can happen happen to you. Remember Evander Holyfield almost losing his title to Smokin' Burt Cooper in Atlanta? Got it's dropped. Yep. Smiling to the Let audience. Go, that's Let right. Go, Playing to the crowd. Step back, please. Get you. And there's Floyd winking at George Foreman. Second fighter tonight to wink at George. Floyd can get knockouts, but he's got to let them happen. Don't go out reaching for knockouts. They come to him. I think against top-class opponents, George, he thinks that way, too, as we saw against Gennaro Hernandez and Diego Corrales. That's right. Against both Hernandez and Corrales, he boxed. And the knockout eventually came. Now he's jabbing to the body, and he's having to move backwards a little bit. That helps him a little bit. He's That's not an up. aggressor. Let the fight come to you. Looping right hand lands for Hernandez. Let go, man. Let go, man. Break. Stop punching. Sometimes what his new trainer is working on for Hernandez is a way to try to get inside without being exposed too much. And so far, he seems to be pretty successful at it. I need a lot of movement. I mean, don't be standing in front of him. You gotta move. So here is uh, pretty boy Floyd with his with his wink. But then a little bit later, we saw his blink as he was caught with a quick lead right hand. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. Fuck. Looked like the people in Hernandez's corner were too late getting out of the ring, but referee Rabel Gave the fighter time for his corner to adjust. Mayweather better watch the right hand of Hernandez because he's got a good one. It's not anything that you can just put your finger on, but he throws it in there pretty accurate. Now Floyd combating the Hernandez right with combinations of his own, and Hernandez trying to walk right through the firestorm to get to Floyd. Break, stop, stop. You got to get the head up. Quit pushing down on here, Floyd. You got better. Do the job. Do the job. Fox. Workout. Hernandez just wants to be inside. Doesn't want to let Mayweather use those lightning re reflexes from outside. And so far, he's been pretty effective at it. It's a hard thing to. Tell yourself you're fighting a guy who cannot fight that well. Then the bell rings and find out he's a little tougher. It's hard to adjust. And that's what has happened to Mayweather. Now, this guy's hitting him with some sneaky right hand, causing him some movement problems because he gets low. And he takes a good shot, Hernandez does. the left 
took of Mayweather that ultimately did the destructive damage against Morales. And you see him trying to make a left hook the factor here early. Kill the body! Kill the body! Stop! Stop! Box! Body shots by Mayweather. Fighting fire with fire. is very comfortable once he sits alongside you and starts watching and timing your punches as he's doing now. Gets pretty comfortable. You got to start throwing a lot of shots to make him uncomfortable. Mayweather landing a solid fusillade of rights and lefts. There's some swelling on Hernandez's face already from the accuracy of Mayweather's shots. above the nose of Carlos Hernandez. Coming in July, HBO Sports presents the next installment in our Sports of the 21st, 20th Century series, Shot Heard Round the World. We'll look back at Bobby Thompson's 1951 home run off Ralph Branca, which won the pennant for the New York Giants. 50 years later, we find the Giants stole the Dodgers pitching signs. Does that taint? One of the most memorable moments in sports history, the little miracle of Coogan's Bluff, you decide. Shot heard round the world, coming July 11, only on HBO. Veronica Hernandez, wife of challenger Carlos Hernandez, practicing psychologist, says that she and Carlos like to sit together and try to visualize what's going to happen in the fight, visualize his responses. My wife would visualize what's going to happen and start screaming. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't think on. you were coming home looking like a pretty boy, George. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come home looking good. <laughs> Moving by Hernandez is really giving uh, Mayweather some problems. Whenever he goes down and moves his head, Mayweather seems to stand and just watch. But when Floyd can get a little distance and begin to straighten out his jab and follow it up with punches from both sides, he is accurate and effective. He landed 30 out of 50 punches by copy box numbers in round two and has been accurate again with the left hook here. to see some fireworks from Pretty Boy Floyd. And a straight right hand seemed to momentarily stun Hernandez. Floyd Mayweather's intentions are plain. He wants a knockout. And he's trying for it very hard right here. Two low blows in a row. Referee Dale Grable just watched them. And there's a hard right hand by Mayweather. Mayweather's trying to throw body shots, jab to the body to make Hernandez lower his hand, start protecting his body. That's what he's looking for. Another right hand from distance wobbles Hernandez. Floyd goes right back to the body once he finishes flurry. Make your man hand go low. Incidentally, Hernandez was introduced from El Salvador, and he proudly represents the people of El Salvador. That's his heritage, but he's lived his whole life in California, lives in Bellflower, California now. The home of the fighting quarries. He also went to a junior college for a while. Cerritos Junior College, where he ran on the track team. Mayweather's paying a hard price 
for this slugging, trying to catch this shoulder guy. Watch this hit. A lot of head button. There's blood, I believe, coming from somewhere. Stop punching. Stop punching. Mayweather's bleeding some. It's from Mayweather's nose, I believe. I think you're right. Stop. 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 Check out the massive welt, though, over the eye and nose of Carlos Hernandez when we go to that corner with interpreter Ray Torres. Don't worry about hitting the head. Keep hitting the body. And move your head a little bit more inside, OK? Okay, you hit him on the, on the side. Okay. Now, when you have him, move him to the side and hit him. Work your way out, work your way out. When he gets near you, hit him. Relax. Oh, Here is that rapier left hand of Mayweather. Hernandez said he's a cat. I've got to be a dog. He's quick. I've got to be tough. Get the bucket, Chuck. Harold, how do you score it through three? Okay, Jim. Three to nothing, 30 to 27. Floyd Mayweather. Based on clean punching and, you know, fighting on the inside, landing the clean, harder shots. Not a lot of combinations, but still at all, landing the cleaner punches. Jim. You know, you may see that, that they're wearing two different kinds of boxing gloves. Floyd wanted those white grand gloves to match his outfit. Hernandez wanted Reyes. Nobody objected. They're wearing two different brands of boxing gloves, two different colors. So, it's so far, this fight is going good for Hernandez. He's not winning the round, but the fight is the kind of fight he would like to be in. Because they've been fighting in close quarters. That's right. And uh, break, break. Harold mentioned the two different gloves. Reyes on Hernandez, Grant on Mayweather. That means it's Hernandez who's wearing the so-called puncher's glove, George. But the Grants provide good blocking. Put them aside beside your face, and it offers a little cushion for when the guys hit you. Mayweather has decided that he's going to have to box. He should have thought about that before the bell rung, though. Now Mayweather switches to southpaw for a moment. Misses a right hook. Mayweather landed 62% of his punches by copy box numbers in round three. This will not be as accurate a round. You don't want a guy watching you bleed and you're trying to discourage him. No, sorry, he's not going to get discouraged. Break! You see the blood and you start coming on and on and on. I think that, that whole trickle of blood is coming from the uh, nostrils of Mayweather, George? So, but the point of it is, it's giving his opponent an end of more and more confidence. I think Dale Grable's ever going to warn Floyd for any of those low blows. into a corner and Hernandez wants to take advantage. Floyd slips away. Well, that's the kind of fight that Floyd likes. Moving and making the guy miss you a little bit and then making him pay for it. Good counter left hook by Mayweather as Hernandez was ducking inside. want the fight to come to him. You don't want to reach out if you're Mayweather because this guy is shorter and he knows what to do with it, his height. Yo, you're doing well. You're being brave. When you grab him, you just move him around. Turn him around a bit. Spin him. You're going to put grease on him. Rub it on his back. Throw it. Listen. Don't put so much water on his mother and shirt. Look at that one. Listen. Throw it. Box him again, next two rounds. We're gonna start back on some war on his ass again, okay? 
Okay. All right, let's go. Wipe his nose. The Mayweather clan is large and prominent here in Grand Rapids. This is Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s grandmother, with whom he grew up. 24, 24 a month. <laughs> Once in the ring, she fainted. That's true. She fainted uh, after Floyd's huge victory over Gennaro Hernandez. This is the kind of fight that Mayweather want to be in. Make the guy reach at you, miss, then you punch him. Don't give him anything. Power punches in round four by CompuBox numbers. Mayweather landed only eight of 19. Hernandez 16 of 46. Floyd was using the jab more in that round. There's a hard right hand by Hernandez countering Floyd's jab. The southpaw stance once again. I would say it's the second time he switched southpaw, although, of course, once when I said that during his fight with Goya Vargas, Floyd looked down and said, No, no, Jim, it was the third time. So, among his many talents, he's capable at times of narrating his own fights. I think Mayweather will settle down now, thinking someone sent him out to get a quick knockout and fooled him that his power is when a guy's running into it. Well said, George. He now has. he's decided, okay, I'm the boxer. Let me box this guy. Whether I'm at home or not, box, box, box. Back to the southpaw stance momentarily for Mayweather. Now back to his conventional stance. I think you're absolutely right, George. He seems now to have gotten out of that quick knockout mentality and into something that more resembles his natural game. Sometimes when you're at home, you want to do some strange things, but stick to your, who you are, and the fights will always fall right in front of you. Middleweight champion, 14 consecutive successful title defenses. Brusa recently moved to Los Angeles from South America, hooked up with Hernandez, and may be instrumental in helping Hernandez to break stop punch. A formula, a plan that is making him competitive against Floyd Mayweather here. Hernandez is making himself like a ball. He just balls up. Doesn't give you much to hit, much to hit, and then moves his head. Mayweather gets a little confused. And because the guy's hitting him. He doesn't like that, and he can't do anything about it. And as a former college distance runner, we can expect Hernandez to have the stamina to keep it up. settles in for what looks like a conventional boxing match for the next few rounds. He, he doesn't want to fight. Brusa is the gentleman whose left shoulder and head dominate the right side of your screen. Are you listening Spanish. to me? You got to block his, his exit. He, he doesn't want to stay there because he doesn't want to train with you. That's why he moves. And is finding it a little bit more difficult Great. to Look get up, into Look Mayweather's up. body now that he's boxing. In round five, Mayweather used his feet to land 26 of 45 punches against 9 of 49 for Hernandez. Hernandez would like to be in position to throw more than 40 or 50 punches. He wants to keep pressure on Floyd Mayweather. Break! Stop punching! Stop punching! Stop punching! Mayweather beginning to shake his right hand as though it's bothering him. 
Now, he had hand injuries in his bout with Corrales back in January and actually saw a doctor when, Larry, earlier this week, yeah, right? On Monday, he went to see a doctor about his hand, which suggests that he has either an injury or he's getting over an injury. He doesn't have big, powerful hands, strong hands. Uh, maybe that will keep him from being the kind of uh, puncher that he envisions himself to be and have to box and let the knockouts happen, as George says. And, and George is the one who pointed out to me that Floyd was shaking his right hand. It's a pretty sure sign, isn't it, George? Yeah, it hurts. Sometimes hurts more than... to the body. While he's in that motion, he switches his body to a southpaw and throws this guy off. George, if the right hand is hurting him, does it hurt more to land a head shot than a body shot? Yeah, I think the body shots are more dangerous because you just, you're just going to hit the end of the elbows and box. You just can't get a real tight fist when you go down to the body, so. If you notice, his right hand is open while his left hand is balled into a fist. Exactly right. He is not balling the right hand, or at least wasn't a moment ago. Shots. Meanwhile, Hernandez is just digging away stay chest to chest with Mayweather. Gets a chance to hit Floyd after the referee said stop. Four. And this is going to be called a knockdown against Floyd Mayweather. Seven. And he motioned Jim about his hand. Box. So there's a turn of events and the potential scoring of the fight. And suddenly Floyd Mayweather is knocked down. And that of course will be a point to the advantage of Hernandez. Let's and go to see as he goes back to his corner. Keep the jab working. Whip it around anyway. Get up the hand for a minute. Hurt bad? I can't quit. I know you ain't gonna quit. You worry about that. But I want you to do that. You use the jab and keep fainting. Listen, draw him into the right uppercut. All right? Then let him come to you and shoot the right up a couple in the middle. All right? No problem. Keep banging him to the body. You got, you got you think about banging it. him to the body. Shoot the right up a couple in the Short left to the head. A delayed reaction. I'm just curious if, 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 he, went, if he went down more because his hand hurt him than because he was hit. It wasn't he because he was hit. It wasn't he because of the punch. Yeah, and it was called a knockdown because he put his left glove on the canvas. Yeah, yeah. he wasn't hit. Harold, how do you have it scored through six now? Look at Jim, 58-55, five right rounds to one. Pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. Certainly I thought he won the first five rounds with the cleaner punching, but then in round six, like you said, 10-8 for Carlos Hernandez. So that knockdown sort of puts him back in the fight. At least it puts him within range that he can punch catch up. More of a fall down than a knockdown, but Hernandez gets the benefit anyway. Mayweather switching to a southpaw stance again, perhaps trying to protect that right hand. He'll throw power punches with the left hand out of this stance. Sometimes you hurt your hand and then you wait a while, wait a while, it'll come back and then you would just wait a while. Use the opposite hand until it comes back. You think you're gonna die when you hurt it, but you're not gonna die. We've seen plenty of instances where a good fighter was able to win with one hand after a situation Stop. like this. Close that hand. Don't twist his arm when it comes in. But. Floyd still using the right hand and using it there for a power shot. This one was definitely a slip. You okay? And you see how wet the corner is. Floyd spreading his feet. Well, 
Floyd Mayweather Jr. seems a little bit discombobulated here. He's a little, a little confused, a little emotional. Uh, something's going on. I can't put my my finger on it, but he's just uncomfortable. just got to make up your mind during training camp that you're going to be in a tough fight. You can't do it in the ring once the bell rings. If you underestimated a guy, you're going to have the fight of your life. Are you listening, Lennox Lewis? If you don't take an opponent seriously, you turn him into a serious opponent. And, uh, and you just can't rise to the occasion on fight night. Just oh, doesn't go happen like that. Like that. Once again, in close quarters, Mayweather wincing, almost like he's biting down on his mouthpiece because he's hurt. But then throwing with the right hand and switching back into the southpaw stance, jabbing and parrying with the right hand. Hernandez is doing a good job of just tapping here, tapping there to confuse Mayweather. He's not trying to land a big shot. Just keep your hand on him and be rough. On the subject of this world's best athlete thing, Mayweather said, hey, Allen Iverson can have an off game. Tiger Woods can lose a tournament, but a boxer can't have an off don't night. Don't with your left hand. When you put your hand out, don't go up this way. I'm sorry, sir. Just fall with you. Fall with your left hand. Bring him into your uppercut. You hit him with the uppercut, you got to bring him into it. Okay. All right? You lay inside. When, when he turns to the left, hit him with your right hand. You gotta throw with that right hand when he turns to that point. You heard Floyd Mayweather Jr. saying, My right hand is killing me. You see him wincing. Inside, he's just got to try to pull this out on pure class. Hey, go on, Floyd. So an unusual challenge presents itself to one of the brightest young stars in the sport of boxing, the brilliant Floyd Mayweather Jr. Now clearly fighting with a damaged right hand and trying to hold on against an onrushing Carlos Hernandez, who is giving him no quarter. Stop. You think your hand's killing you, but it's not going to kill you. You just got to keep throwing it, as you just saw him do. Solid connect to the body with the right hand. Don't give up on your own hand. Mayweather's corner told him to just to power with your right hand, power with it. And he's doing a little party. Constantly switching stances. Conventional, southpaw, conventional, then southpaw. When he's in the southpaw stance, as he is now, the right hand becomes the lead hand. Switches back to conventional. Looks as though Floyd is going to do this constantly and fluidly for the rest of the fight. He's in fine condition. That's the problem. Hernandez is coming on strong, but Mayweather's in such good shape. Not the kind of entertainment Floyd wanted to provide to the hometown fans. Certainly it appeared in the early rounds that he was looking for a spectacular KO. Now, as George Foreman said at the beginning of the evening, just get the win. Get the win and make sure the promoter pays you the money. <laughs> That's what a lot of fighters didn't do. And look good the next time, right? Right, Larry? Yeah. Win tonight will be sensational next time. <laughs> Hernandez is just looking for one shot. One shot. And I think he's fooling himself. He should just get in there and land a lot of shots. that left to the body again. He's aiming, he's sizing him up for overhand left. Left hook. Left 
to the body out of the southpaw stance. Mayweather finds another option that works for him and scores to close the round. June 18, that's the next edition of Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. Among the stories we're working on, a look at a controversy at Cal State Fullerton, where a woman has been kicked off of her track team for taking a part-time job as a stripper. It's Monday, June 18 at 10 p.m. Real Sports, nothing is out of bounds. You understand? You got you, you got to hit him on the side. You got to hit him anyway. When when he, when he comes near you, just hit him. Do you understand me? Come on. What's up, Tony? Keep running to the right. Keep running to the right. This fight looks like a, a jeweled watch against the Timex, but the Timex is hanging in there. Yeah, because the jeweled watch may have a broken spring. Yep. Stop, stop, stop. Keep your head in. Don't pull on them. Don't pull on them. One too many, man. Come on, give me a break. Hernandez is face misshapen from the early punishment Mayweather dealt. But no cuts, just swelling. Mayweather's doing this all with his legs, keeping his left foot and his right foot on the outside of his opponent. Never, only puts it between his legs when he's ready to throw a punch. And the crowd, many of whom paid $200 a piece for ringside seats, wondering why they're seeing a tactical display at this point. They will learn from the newspapers tomorrow or the news programs tonight about Floyd's right hand. out of the southpaw stance. Mayweather fighting this entire round in the southpaw stance. George, why do you think he's going to fight the whole round as a southpaw? Is that to protect his right hand somehow? Well, I mean, he does a good job of parring better with his right hand. Seems like he's able to just lay that right right on in there as a substitute power punch. Uh-huh. And meanwhile, he can try to generate power off the back foot with the left hand. That's what he's doing. But you don't have to throw it with power. You can just kind of like a bowling ball, just roll it right on in, and the guy runs into it. That's what he's doing with his left hand now. And now he is hearing from the hometown crowd something that surely he did not want to hear. Yeah, but let them boo. Absolutely. Let Great them stuff. boo. Get the win. This is not a Broadway play. This is boxing. Dylan said everybody must get stoned. <laughs> so he would not feel so all alone. <laughs> but everybody gets booed. Well, that's true, George, but nobody wants to come home and get booed. But only remember, as a boxer there, you have no home. Hey, happy 60th, Bob, if you're watching. Dylan turned 60 this past week. Hey, Bob Dylan. Hey. hey. I gave him my one tip right here. Hey. Go get some cake. Cool. Let the man keep coming to you. Keep dropping right hook on him. Right hook, right hook, right hook. Pour him up the there. All right? You, you come in, you come in. Wow. He's here anyway. When, when he puts his, his, his hand out there, hit him. You gotta hit him on the side, hit him in the body. If you wanna win this fight, you gotta throw punches and put pressure on him. Okay? Sit down, coach. 
says now, coach. Ten. Ten. Round ten of a scheduled twelve. Back right floor. Get that ice out. And referee Dale Grable wants a timeout now to remove ice and water from the corner of uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. How do you have it for nine? Up here, Jim. 87 83, seven rounds to two. Floyd Mayweather. Jim's very interesting. Floyd wins the first five, hurts his hand in round six. Right, Carlos Hernandez lands some punches. Right, Roger Mayweather. Seven. But Floyd absolutely stopped in the eighth and ninth. I mean, uh, Hernandez stopped in the eighth and ninth. All right, now Larry Merchant has gone to Floyd Mayweather's corner to have a conversation with trainer Roger Mayweather about the broken or perhaps damaged right hand that Floyd is fighting with. Larry, take it away. All right, Roger, does he does Floyd have a broken hand? I don't know if it's broken, but he says it's hurt. But he had hurt in camp, so I already knew that uh, he wasn't going to be using his uh, uh, right hand that much. But like I'm telling him, I say he needs to stay inside and run the guy with short punches. Right up a cup, right hook, because the guy's sucker for because because the guy don't know what bullet his way in. There's, because he hurt his hand, is that why you were hoping that he could get through this fight quickly? No, I, I don't I don't look for him to get through the fight so quickly. What I'm looking for is for Floyd to really Floyd can lay inside with the guy, use the defense and counter off what the guy is doing. All the guy is doing is being aggressive. It ain't that he's throwing a tremendous amount of punches. It's that Floyd has to trick him, has to use the skill to trick him. Run him in the right upper cup, shoot the right hook, left hook, and that way you guys can trick the guy out because he's kind of busting right, So you said he came to the fight with a hand that wasn't 100%, yeah. and and somewhere in the middle of the fight he hurt it even more. Right, he heard, he heard it. He said he heard it on the guy's head, I think, about the fourth round. But I think Floyd's still going to get him out of there. You see what he's doing right now? I think he's still going to get him out of there. That's what I told him to do. Thank you, Roger. So George, Roger Mayweather wants Floyd to stand inside with Hernandez and play off of Hernandez's limited offense with counter shots of his own, right? Maybe it's a good idea, maybe not. See, he doesn't understand that Mayweather is not the short guy this time. He is taking, getting taken advantage of because the other guy is smaller, he gets lower, and he's able to land shots when they're close. say that the right uppercut would do damage and Floyd's doing some damage with the right uppercut. Although now Hernandez begins to accelerate his punch output and lands a good shot inside and Floyd lands one right back at him and stop, stop, stop. now they wrestle. Pull behind him one more time and we'll get you. Right, Don't go. punt him. Yeah, stay, there. stay there. Stay there. Inside the gloves. Don't push him. Back. That's the grumpiest referee I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Let's put some tape on the gloves. You gotta put more pressure on him. Sometimes uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. has uh, been grimacing uh, without getting hit. He is in pain. And that welt between the eyes of Hernandez is grotesque. It's it's swollen to such an extent now it's uh, like a like a third eye or an extra nose. Such a big promontory on his face. George, does that bother the fighter or does he not even feel it? Well, you don't really feel it as much as knowing that you know something's wrong with your head. You don't really pay much attention. You got to protect yourself. Doesn't seem to be affecting Hernandez's vision. A lot of it is we see it more than the, the fighter feels it. That's what I figured. Hernandez 
lands a right hand as he jumps in again. Referee Dale Grable also intrigued by the welt on Hernandez's face, and now he wants a doctor to look at it. See that nose? George, so if it was broken, so what? Has this referee never seen a broken nose before? <laughs> I guess he was worried about breathing capacity, but the doctor says the nose isn't broken, it's fine. Carlos Hernandez won't win this fight, but he'll get some personal satisfaction of making Floyd Mayweather run from him at times uh, and just stay in there with him. the punch, you know? Years from now, he'll tell his grandchildren, yeah, I floored Floyd with a beautiful right hand. It was a perfect shot. Mayweather just can't seem to zero in with that right hand to the head. He wants a clean shot, and he just can't seem to see it. and followers of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Brilliant talent, having to scuffle his way through what is becoming an ugly fight. Clearly fighting with a damaged right hand, probably broken. Having to wrestle Carlos Hernandez from moment to moment, bump him off. Worried about head bumps, this is tough. Earlier we were speculating on how Chavez could deal with uh, Mayweather. A slippery pointer there. He could tear a hamstring or, or hurt a knee so easily yeah, that's slipping a, that way. That's the Fox. second time that's happened. Now you have to speculate that it's a good thing for Mayweather he wasn't in there with Chavez tonight. <laughs> this is the last round, you hear me? We gotta come up with everything. Don't hold anything back. You gotta keep going with that pressure, and when you get in, you just gotta keep punching. Okay, come on. Okay? Why won't you get him out of there? This is it. This is it. By CompuBox estimate, Floyd Mayweather threw only 40 punches in the 11th round, landing 10. Carlos Hernandez, 19 out of 67. Depending on the predisposition of the scorers who are judging the fight, that was a round that could have been given to Hernandez. Harold, how do you have it scored so far? And is this a tough enough fight to score that Floyd's people should be nervous about it? No, Jim, not at all. I think that uh, Floyd Mayweather was easily outboxing him. Nine rounds to two, 107, 101. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jim, Carlos Hernandez gets inside, there's a leg of punches. I mean, his punches are wide, they're being blocked, they're on the arms. Floyd Mayweather still landed in the cleanly shots with one hand. I mean, in truth, he is punching with two hands, but, you know, one of them's hurt. Landing the cleanly shots. All right, so Harold Letterman sees Floyd as being comfortably clear of Hernandez. Deduction of a point against Hernandez. Box. So Mayweather gets back the 
the point he lost when he went That's down earlier in the fight and provided Hernandez with a knockdown. That knock referee is, is not a good referee at all. He seemed to be Great, pushing Mayweather him. around, talking in his ear, doing a boxing match. I don't know where they got that guy, but they should send him back. Stop, stop, stop. His name is Dale Grable. Uh, George, he speaks very highly of you. Just cut it well, off. I'm not going to speak highly off. of him on the referee job he's doing tonight. Just and cut you it heard off. Michael Buffer say that he'd been uh, a referee in what, 37 to 38 world yeah, championship fights? I think he said this is his 27, yeah, something man, like that. Put my hand on. Mayweather must have swore at his mom or something. Something's gone wrong. I like the word you used earlier, grumpy. He is grumpy. Yeah, but you can't be. You can grumpy and then make an errors the way he's doing tonight when a, a championship is on the line. Well, pretty boy hasn't looked very pretty tonight. But certainly good enough for a successful defense of his title. Maybe not pretty, but gutty, resourceful, determined. He's yeah, shown a lot of championship qualities in there tonight. Sometimes a champion's going to have to go through this and find a way to get through it, and, and he has. Well, he's fighting, and he has all the advantage, the height, the weight, the reach. He, he's not a good fighter when these things happen for him. He has to be on the opposite end of it. You made that point at the beginning of the fight, and it certainly has panned out, George. In hindsight, Corrales was just too easy to hit in his stand-up, walk-forward style, while, this, while Hernandez is just roughing him up, getting inside, making it ugly, but hanging in there. The equivalent would be a pitcher who has blisters and therefore can't throw his good curve or fastball, but somehow finds a way to get the batters out. Floyd Mayweather continued to get the batters out. Prophetic words from George Foreman at the very beginning of the evening when he said, just get the win, worry about the glory some other time. Tonight, Floyd Mayweather was not in a position to care about glory. He had to just get the win. You know, what's so confusing about this, Jim and George, is if they knew that he had a damaged hand going in, why would he go out there and try to end the fight throwing punches when you're bound to land your hands on the other guy's head, elbows from time to time. Uh, when I speak to him, uh, we'll have to see what he says. If he wins. Huh? <laughs> George, he's in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's his hometown. He's the undefeated champion. Not too, much, not too many ifs here. And you saw Mayweather grimacing as the gloves were removed, clearly in great pain. Let's quickly look back at the progression of the fight. In the early rounds, Floyd, trying to put on a show, began to reach a dazzling tempo around round three when he landed a series of power punches and clearly had Hernandez on the defensive. But by the sixth round, Floyd was exhibiting to those at ringside that he was bothered by a right-hand problem. And this was ruled a knockdown when Floyd put a glove on the canvas in obvious pain after hitting Hernandez. No punch took him to the canvas, but nevertheless, when the glove went down, it was called a knockdown and the referee counted. In the seventh round, Mayweather continued openly to grimace. He constantly switched his stance, southpaw, conventional, mostly southpaw, through the end of the fight, using the right hand but using it mostly as a range finder and a pity pat scorer rather than delivering punches with authority. I know. I know he didn't look good in this fight. That's all I can say. He didn't. 
Good strike, Carlos. Good strike. Yeah. Can I tell you something, Larry? And they're still counting up the scores here in Grand Rapids. You have a sense, George, that this might have been a hard fight for the judges to score? Yeah, pretty hard because the other guy was aggressive and he saw the other guy screaming yeah, to the referee, something I'm hurting. Yep. You have to stop and think about these things. Let's go up to Michael Buffer and find out if Floyd Mayweather got Ladies the win. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Peter Tremontera scores the bout 119 to 110. Bob Watson has the bout, 117 to 110. And Marty Salmon scores at 116 to 112. All three judges concur. The winner by unanimous decision and still the undefeated super featherweight champion of the world, pretty boy, Floyd Mayweather. for vanquished challenger Carlos Hernandez. The three judges falling right in line with Harold Letterman. So Harold wins the argument about whether it was an easy fight to score. Final copy box numbers and you see Mayweather landed 69 more through 156 fewer landed at a much higher connect percentage than did Hernandez. Jabs and Mayweather jabbed with both the right hand and the left hand mostly down the stretch with the right hand landing 63 out of 207 Hernandez who landed very few jabs against previous championship level opponent Gennaro Chicanito Hernandez landed only seven of 58 here and Larry Merchant stands by with the winner and still champion Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, thank you Jim congratulations Floyd rough night to get through oh man tonight was um it was a rough night actually um you know i hurt my left hand and later later on in the fight i hurt my right hand so i had to try to win the best way i know how all I right my legs boxing move he was tough but i think if i had both of my hands i could you know eventually right, boxed let's, and got him out let's of go back to the dressing room when you came into this fight uh, how badly were your hands hurting you to be honest larry you know i came into the fight with two messed up hands but you know, I, don't like, I had no excuse. I like to go out there and fight and put on a good show. But you know, like I said, I want to thank God. For, you know, God for getting me through this. I want to thank God for bringing me where I'm at today. I want to thank Team Mayweather, and I want to thank um, Grant. When you were in the dressing room before the fight, I understand that they tried to give you some extra tape, but you refused it. Well, um, no, no, they didn't try to give me no extra tape. No. But I just wanted my hand wraps put onto it where they feel comfortable. And um, so I, I thought, you know, if I had a lot of padding on top. A lot of tape on my wrist that my hand, you know, I can get. Did you have to take a shot of Novocaine in either hand or both? Both. Both hands. Both hands. So when did you start feeling the pain? Actually, I started feeling the pain like they, when, when they called it a knockdown. That's when I hit him and I really felt it bad in my left hand. All right, let's take a look at what happened there because there was no punch actually landed. You just went down from the pain and you needed a break. Now, now watch here. There really wasn't a punch landed. You you hit him on the head with your left hand, and that must have really felt. Oh, and 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 eventually you went down. Just it seemed to get a break, and they called it a knockdown. Um, this is a part. This is a part of boxing. But the main thing is I got through this tonight, and I just give thanks to God. You know what I'm saying? All right. Did bring, you? Bring did, here, man. It looked like in the first two rounds you wanted to get him out of there. Was that in part at least? because you didn't want to put your hands through 12 tough rounds. <laughs> Man, I thought, um, you know, I thought my hands were going to be strong, but my hands did feel good halfway until I hit, hit them on top of the head. But, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to fighting Jesus Chavez. He went out there, put on a good show, put on a good performance, and um, I just want to keep working hard. I'm, I'm young and I'm still learning. This is something you have to deal with in boxing. Uh, is this the roughest night you've ever had in boxing? To be honest, um, it was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a real rough night, but the main thing is I got through it. And um, I'm, I'm looking for, forward to bigger and better things. I'm looking forward to fighting Jesus Chavez. Are you going to have to take months off to let your hands heal, perhaps even to, to have them operated on? I don't know how long I'm going to have to take off, but it was a hard night. It was a hard night. 
and I'm just, I'm just happy with the victory. Uh, you got you don't have big hands. Let's no. hold these hands up. Uh, I, small hands. Are these knockout hands? Oh, I mean, the, 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 there's no bone right here. See? Right, right over here. You can see there's no knuckle. There's no knuckle right here. Right, right here. There's no knuckle right here. And I got this, this thing, keep coming, a big knock coming right here on the, on the left. Does this mean basically you have to be a boxer and let the knockout just come when it comes? That's why in a lot of fights you see me boxing this move because my hands is hurting. But my hands never hurt me like they hurt me tonight. And so I was just trying to, you know, pit, pity pad and, and move and get the win the best way I know how. You got the win. Congratulations again, champ. Thank you. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Larry. So what are the implications of uh, Floyd Jr.'s hands for the rest of his career? Well, the most important thing is that he's got an, uh, an opponent in Chavez who's about the same height, pretty much the same style that can give him a lot of trouble. But if you're going to be a boxer, you got to live with bad hands. That comes along with the sport. I've had to go into the ring where I couldn't squeeze my hands, and Muhammad Ali and all of us. So that's nothing new to the boxing world. So you did fight sometimes when you knew you were entering the ring at less than 100 percent because most, of your hands. Most of the time you get into the ring and your hands are sore. And uh, of course, I don't even take the shots because I'm scared of needles. <laughs> but I'm afraid of needles. But I, sore hands, broken knuckles, it comes with the sport and there's no way out. If you want to be rich, fight with the knuckles broken. Do most state commissions allow a fighter to, you to get a tell. shot? You don't tell. You let them feel it. Even if they squeeze and hurt your fingers, you say, how, they ask, how does it feel? You say, great. And you go back to the corner somewhere and scream, ouch. Mm -hmm. But you hide the pain. If you want to if you want to make it in the sport, you just cannot. And I, I feel, uh, you know, some compassion for him, but welcome to the real world. If a guy's trying to be a puncher, and his hands are constantly breaking. Must he change his style and be a boxer? Well, not at all. Some of these big guys are going to run over you. If you don't have knock them out, you're not going to be lasting long. You're going to have to get it over with, even if it takes breaking your knuckles once more, of which <laughs> I've had it done a few times. You just break your knuckles and go to a good doctor. I've got a good stuff. doctor in Houston. <laughs> go tell Floyd. Oh, well, tell his manager, James Prince. Yeah. He's from Houston. He He'll bring him down there. He can stay at your ranch. Yeah. Teach him how to ride a horseback. Amen. It'll be a lot of fun. Fascinating night. Your thoughts? Uh, 24 rounds, about, well, I don't know, 15 or 16 more rounds than perhaps we expected to see. Um, all the fighters seem to have uh, mayhem on their minds, but only misdemeanors in their fists. And so we had long, grueling, hard, tough fights. Uh, let's let's give a, a, a pat on the back uh, to both opponents of the, the uh, so-called opponents the guys who got beat Arius were tremendously and courageous they came they fought they were in shape uh, they won respect and uh, they surprised us good for them all right and and also a pat on the back for the resourcefulness of both of the guys who won uh, Chavez and Mayweather it'll make for an interesting confrontation when it takes place. Well, earlier this evening, we invited you to participate in our website poll and answer the question, who will win the undisputed middleweight championship of the world? And uh, perhaps intoxicated by Felix Trinidad's devastating performances against Fernando Vargas and against William Joppy, you overwhelmingly chose Trinidad to beat Bernard Hopkins this fall, 77% to 23%, no recount necessary. June 16, undefeated bantamweight champion Tim Austin, fighting in his hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio, makes his Boxing After Dark debut here, taking on Steve Dotsie. Then one week later on TVKO pay-per-view, Oscar De La Hoya, coming off his destruction of Arturo Gatti, moves up from welterweight to 154 pounds in order to face one of the reigning title holders in that weight class, Javier Castillejo. HBO, the heart and soul of boxing.